Dear Magister Kuypers, thank you for your recent post. So, the Unio Mystica, or Mystical Union, you very aptly captured the big picture, what Hesse is outlining in the introductory chapter, the good old subjectivity versus objectivity debate. Indeed, this debate has been around for quite a while, although many now believe we need to jettison this dualistic approach to the world. On page 19, Hesse writes that the origins of music lie far back in the past and are rooted in the Great Oneness, and that the Great Oneness consists of two poles, which in turn beget the power of darkness and the power of light. Are these two poles, I ask, the same dualistic poles of objectivity and subjectivity? Alan Watts said that religious psychedelic experience involves an awareness of polarity and poles. He says that it is the vivid realization that things which are explicitly different are implicitly one, states, things, and events which we ordinarily call opposite, are actually intertwined. For example, self and other, male and female, back and front, and then, a little more surprisingly, solid and space, figure and background, pulse and interval, etc., and, yes, the poles of a magnet. So, Magister Kuypers, what do you say about computer music in strict time, without any so-called human feeling? We humans discover that we can nevertheless still appreciate it. We understand it on some level. Now, take that same piece of music and give it to a live performer who is in touch with their present environment, and we may get still an even better performance, but, why is it better? Yes, I believe that spontaneous subjective human feeling is actually our way of tapping into more intricate mathematical levels of complexity, so aged and advanced is the human system. Thus, subjectivity is a way of tapping into higher levels of objective truths. Well, why then does the computer's rendition do anything for us at all, which I would argue, it does. What exactly are we hearing, when we hear a computer sing? Thank you for listening. I must return now to abusing small woodland creatures with a corkscrew and a rusty cheese grater. Sincerely yours, Mr. Selkirk.